So welcome everyone. Uh, in this uh, keynote address, I am expected to share with you the basic uh, uh, concept behind the <clears throat> international conference that we have on human values in higher education. This international conference on human values in higher education is an annual is an annual <coughs> conference for educators. The purpose is to get in touch with the with those who are in the responsibility of educators. <coughs> it is aimed at developing a shared vision and action for human education. And through that, the emergence of human society in which the well-being of all is realized generation after generation. So three things. Number one, we want to share the vision, a holistic vision and action for human education. Right? Through which it is possible to work for the emergence of a human society. A human society which will ensure the well-being of all, generation after generation. So basically our basic effort is to is for mainstream education that is holistic and value-based. So if you look at the education today, it seems to be very lopsided and very kind of limited in its scope. So for the fulfillment of the human uh, aspiration, it is necessary to have a system of education which is holistic and which is value-based. And such an education will have this quality of being holistic universal, rational, verifiable, humane, and leading to harmony. And if we have such an education system, it will result into these three things, the fulfillment of individual goals for happiness and prosperity through the development of human consciousness. It will help in the resolution of the problems at their root. And ultimately, it will result into a humane society in which the well-being of all is ensured generation after generation. So with this holistic uh, vision for human education, we have this international conference where we want to share this vision and the effort we made in this direction. <laughs> The approach we are taking in this whole effort for the fulfillment of human aspirations and the resolutions of problem is what I want to just place forward. There are three possible approaches. One is this problem-centric, problem-solving approach. Second is solution-centric, problem-solving approach. And third is solution-centric, solution efforts. In general, if we look at what we are doing today, most of the time we are centered around the problem that we are facing and we are trying to search for some solution to that problem. That is the first approach. What we are trying to work on is this solution-centric, solution efforts where we are trying to work out what is the solution overall to human existence and existence as a whole. Okay. From individual to family to society and nature. Right. And how we can ensure living with that solution at all levels of our being from family to world family. If you look at the current situation, the basic problem is that we are not able to identify the human goals 
in its completeness and therefore we are not able to work for the fulfillment of these human goals. And put together, the outcome is lack of fulfillment of human goals. And once there is lack of this fulfillment of human goals in its completeness, we have so many problems all around. So we can see many problems at all levels, at the level of individual, family, society, nature. And we are troubled by these problems and we want to get rid of them. And most of our effort today is focused around this efforts to get rid of problems. And we can see that the efforts are being made for the problems, for solving the problems at all, at every level, individual, family, society, and nature. And many people are making effort at the level of individuals, families, organizations, movements, and so on. So we have all kinds of movements going on in this society, which is trying to solve these problems. If we take one or two examples, right? one problem which we felt was that there is lack of relationship because there is lack of communication between people. Therefore, the effort that was made to get rid of this problem of lack of communication and then the lack of relationship was to develop telephony. Today we have the technology, we have mobile phones and it is successful in the sense that about 80% of the people have a long landline or mobile phone. It, so the technology is successful, but if you ask this question, whether the transmission has increased, the, the technology is successful, the transmission has increased, but has the communication increased or decreased? Has the relationship improved or otherwise? The family members talking to people far away, but unable to relate to their family members. So we have... <coughs> The means of communication, we have the connectivity, the physical connectivity, but are we able to relate to each other? The condition of the relationship in the family, has it improved or it has gone down? I was mentioning in the last session that I happened to attend one of these conferences in Bhutan and the Minister of Communication was there as the chief guest. And after the session was over, we were talking and he said, look, do something, you know, I have three sons and we all have mobile phone. And most of the time in my house, the condition is that we are all talking to somebody else outside on phone and we are not able to talk to each other. The situation is more or less same now, you know, everywhere. So we have found a solution to the problem of lack of communication and therefore lack of relationship, but it is not working because the relationship is not just a matter of communication. It's much more right? and we don't understand what is that. <clears throat> Similarly, at one time, we felt that there is a problem of lack of sufficient food in India. And so there was this effort in terms of developing the chemical farming. Right? The technology that was suggested in response to this was green revolution technology. If you look at it after 60 years, it seems that the technology is successful and we are able to grow excess quality quantity of food. But even after 40, 50 years, 40% 40 do not have enough food. 
rising problems in health like cancers, pollution, right? food, soil, air, and water quality is degrading. So that is how it goes about. Right? So we identify a problem, we search for a solution, we work with the solution, right? And at the end of it, we find that the problems is partly solved, but there are many other problems which have come you know, out of it. Situation has become better or worse? So there are two possible approaches. One is the problem-centric approach. The other is solution-centric approach. In the <clears throat> problem-centric approach, we are dealing with the problem or even the symptoms of problem, not the problem directly. And then we are searching for the solution which is generally in terms of the relief of the symptoms, right? And which is very temporary in nature. The solution-centric approach, basically, and that is what we are trying to work with, it begins with clarity of the all-encompassing solution. So if you look at the human existence and the existence as a whole, we need to have the clarity of the all-encompassing resolution. Right? So if we have to live as a human being in this existence with fulfillment, then what is going to be the overall goal? That clarity has to be there. And what is going to be the program for its fulfillment? That is number one. Once we have that clarity, the second step we have to work make effort for this all-encompassing resolution. And if you do this one and two, then most of the problem will automatically get resolved. But if they don't get automatically resolved, we can certainly work for three and four. In step three, we are doing the problem analysis in the light of this all-encompassing resolution. And then we are making effort to get rid of the root cause of the problem. So this is what is the solution-centric approach, right? In which the focus is on the all-encompassing resolution. Under this solution-centric approach, our effort is for what we have mentioned, developing a shared vision and action for human education and through that the emergence of a human society in which the well-being of all is realized generation after generation. Right. And what we are saying is that if we make such an effort for a holistic and value-based education, it will result into fulfillment of individual goal. It will result into a human society in which well-being of all is ensured generation after generation. And it will also help resolution of problems at their root. Now, if you look at this solution-centric approach with these four steps, one, two, and three, right? Now we can ask, is this approach enough or something more is required? Number two, all four steps are necessary or something can be left out or added. Number four question is, number three question is, what would be the order? Shall we start with three and four and then go for one and two? Or we work for one and two and if necessary, three and four. And the fourth question is that, what are we doing today? So let us see what is the response to this. Where do we stand in response to these four questions?
what do you think all these four steps are necessary or something can be left out and what would be the order 3 4 then 1 2 or 1 2 and then 3 4 yes chandrasekhar so at present we are trying to uh, if i want if i am giving uh, try to give the answer in terms of example at present we are trying to get rid of headache by taking paracetamol instead of uh, you know knowing what is the reason behind the headache instead of knowing from where it comes so we are trying to remove it with help of some medicine like paracetamol is it something like that so 1 2 3 4 is the correct uh, you know uh, sequence yeah Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, Sudarshan. SK Sudarshan. Uh, hello, sir. I feel yeah. uh, four is very important to understand the root cause analysis. Without that, I think uh, whatever the effort we are making, that may go waste. True. True. But how will you find the root cause unless you have the clarity of the all-encompassing solution? Oh, before solution, problem should be identified, sir. Because 40% of uh, uh, persons are not having enough food. I don't think it's a correct stat uh, statistics because we are not getting any manpower to do any work. So much busy or so much they are earning. In that case, what that may be on the papers that 40% of the people are without food and all those things, no? Yeah, true. True. We have so many paradoxes. On the one hand, we have people who are not getting good food, you know, wholesome food. On the other hand, we are not getting people to work. True. And even the farmers, uh, they are getting the not getting the proper uh, rating. They are asking the minimum uh, pricing for their uh, products. What does it indicate? The production is more than the requirement. That's what the that all these questions will come, no sir? Yes. You... This is interesting. You know, the food production in India is something like three to four times what is required for the all for all the people in India. World over, we are producing six times what is required for all the people. Then why hunger should be there? Yes. So this identification of problem without understanding this overall thing does not work. That is the problem. Yes, sir. Very much. So, true. identification of problem is uh, you know, proper. And second, to to the root cause is also seems to be very difficult. I mean, this what you are saying is very correct that you know you don't get people to work. Okay, on the one hand, on the other hand, you know, you uh, hear so many of these incidents that farmers committing suicide, right? Mm. Yeah. Yes. So this number four is important. You know, that root cause of the problem should be known and it should be tackled. We should make effort for it. Yes. But before we make effort, three is important. You know, this proper and problem is important. And when you want to make a proper analysis of the problem, then one and two is important. Otherwise, it is not possible to make a proper problem analysis. So what, you know, this example of giving paracetamol for headache, it's not the now solution. We do not know why this 
yeah, why this headache is taking place. But we don't want to bear that pain of headache. So we want to divert that pain. So one day or half day, we are free of that pain and then again comes back. So it's the only day. hoping that uh, the back. body will try to adjust itself uh, for that headache or recover the, from that problem for time being the solution. It cannot be the permanent solution. Yes. That means we are not really doing this analysis proper three and yes. the effort that we are making is also not dealing with the root cause. Yes. So nice. We'll move ahead with that. So the approach that we are going to take is the solution centric approach and the sequence in which we are going to work is one and two. Right, and that is what we are focusing on. In the process, if necessary, we will also work for three and four. So with this approach, let's look at this in the context of the three topics that we are going to deal with in the con con in the conference. So uh, in the panel discussion, we have these three main uh, topics. One is on health. The second is on SDGs. Third is on education. So let us see how we are going to deal with these issues in the light of our solution-centric approach. <clears throat> so let's look at the health first. The present state is that we consider that human being is equal to body. The fact remains that human being is not just the body but coexistence of self and body. So this is one important shift. Today we think that happiness comes through sensation or feeling from others. So if we get the favorable feeling from the other or favorable sensation through our body, we will be happy. If we understand properly, we see that to be in harmony is happiness. And if we can ensure being in harmony at all levels of our being, starting from individual to family, society, and the whole nature, then harmony at all these levels will result into a state of continuity of happiness within. The present state about health is, when we say health, it means healthy body. But with the proper understanding of the human being, in this nature, in this existence, then the health would mean health of the self, health of the body, and health of the environment. So a healthy self, a healthy body, and a healthy environment is what will ensure the health in human being. And this healthy environment includes the family, the society, the nature in which we are embedded. So for human being to be healthy, all three health of the self, of the body, and of the environment has to be ensured. And this healthy environment calls for healthy family, society, and ultimately the nature. So if we have this all-encompassing solution or resolution, that is how the health would look like, right? We can see that in the absence of resolution in the self, happiness is sought through sensation through the body and getting the right feeling like respect from the other. As a result, the body is harmed due to excessive consumption or overindulgence to get favorable sensation. So this is interesting that if we think that the source of happiness is getting favorable sensation through the body, then we end up in overindulgence, in excessive consumption, because we think that if we consume through the body and we get the favorable thing, sensation, it will lead to happiness. So even when this food is not needed for the body, the stomach is full, 
it is full up to the neck. We want to eat because out of the sensation we'll get happiness. So the result is this excessive consumption and overindulgence. Right. Now this leads to the problems of overweight, indigestion, and then all kind of disease. There are two side effects. One is the continuity of happiness cannot be ensured by this sensation, whoever overconsumption you do. And second is that there is a major impact on family, society, and nature because of this overconsumption. Right? So you can see, for example, the overeating, the consumption of junk food, etc., is very common. A large number of diseases are psychosomatic in nature. So this is interesting, right? We keep saying that a large number of diseases are psychosomatic, but we are not doing anything for the health of the cell. And therefore, these diseases continue to be, and they in fact continue to get aggravated. The environment, the family, society, and nature is exploited. And at least it is not a major concern. So that is where we are when we go with the problem mode. If you look at it in terms of the resolution, we will see that the health of the environment has to be there, has to be ensured as the background. Right? So it should be available for all of us. Right? The family, the society, the nature has to be healthy. With that healthy background, healthy environment, we can work for the health of the self. So that health of the self is to be ensured. And this is going to be the main focus. Right? Because the healthy self only will have the feeling of self-regulation towards body. And under that, it will be able to take care of the health of the body. So this is interesting. That unless the self is healthy, it cannot take care of the body. It cannot take care of the health of the body. Now, once the healthy self, uh, the health, uh, the self is healthy, then only we can work for health of the body, as detailed further, right, in the next. So, if that sense of self-regulation is there in the cell, then the self will take care of the body through these four steps, which is given on the right side, right. So for staying healthy, we will take care of the intake and the daily routine. Take care of the labor through the body, which will keep the body in health. And then exercise. Then the self will make sure to work with the postures for regulating internal and external body organs and regulated breathing. And this should be enough to keep the body healthy. And if for some reason still there is some problem with the body, okay, then this fourth medicine and treatment will be necessary. Right. But because we are not aware of the self and the concern of the self for the body, the self-regulation by the self, which calls for these first three steps, they are missing. And if you look at our present approach, we are directly going for the fourth one, that is medicine and treatment, right? And mostly they're also focused on treatment. So we have dependence on drugs on machine to perform a body function. And that is what we consider is, you know, the need to be done for the health of the body. Whether it works or not is something which you all must have experienced.
this is an example where we are focusing on problem centric problem solving approach the solution centric problem solving approach or solution centric solution efforts so if your body has developed cancer and you are making a treatment for the cancer right the focus is on cancer and getting rid of it right if you get rid of the problem of cancer which is a basic basically a symptom of the problem will the body become healthy so no guarantee on the other hand if we are focusing on ensuring a healthy body and in the process we are also treating the cancer then the two take can be taken care of we'll have a healthy body and we'll have you know kind of take care of this cancer there but this is also not enough right this is not enough because if we have the healthy body and we do not have a healthy self the healthy the unhealthy self is likely to get indulged right and make the body and healthy so ultimately what we need is a healthy self a healthy body and healthy environment and in the process if there is a disease called cancer or any such thing taking care of that so the attention is on how to ensure healthy or health holistically in future and this is going to work i was quoting this example that we were having a, a workshop in a place called meghnagar in jhabua district of madhya pradesh in one of the uh, uh, hospital called jeevan jyoti hospital which was run by the missionaries and this uh, father who was you know heading that hospital he happened to attend this workshop and at the end of the workshop he said that we have been working for you know health of the adivasis around but one thing which we were finding very difficult was that every time a person comes and we spend sufficient amount of time and care and he is fine you know he is recovered he goes back and after 6 months or 1 year he is back again with the same problem and we did not know what to do now after attending the workshop we realized that we have to do something for their self because as long as the self is not in harmony right not healthy it is likely to indulge the body in something or the other and then he will be back with an unhealthy body so this is what is happening right in fact if you know in india also we have something like 20% more than 20% of the people who are suffering from obesity and this obesity is caused by the excess excessive consumption not because of the lack of food right so if we look at the health holistically that is how Uh, it will appear so this is one issue that we are going to deal with in this international conference in a holistic manner the other issue is that of sdg right. sustainable development goals that is being talked about by the united nation all over the world right. if you look at this sdgs the approach is again the problem centric and problem solving approach
So most of these goals that we are being talked about are listing of the problems that we are facing today. What we are proposing as a resolution is that we should be able to identify the human goals right? in, you know, holistically. And if you do that, these are the five goals that we can identify. Ensuring right understanding, right feeling in every individual leading to happiness. The health in every individual, prosperity in every family, this trust, fearlessness in the society, and mutual enrichment in the nature. Now, these five goals can be ensured by having at least these five dimensions of the system, like education, sanskar, the health and self-regulation, the production and work, and so on. And the process to ensure this is to start with self-development, then the team development and ultimately the societal development. So this is an all-encompassing resolution for the human existence. What we will try to do is to just briefly show that some of these problems that is being talked about under SDGs can be naturally sorted out if we ensure this all-encompassing resolution. So look at this, for example, working on programs to increase GDP for SDG1. So if you look at this SDG1, it says no poverty. So this poverty is a problem, right, today. And the solution that we are seeking for is no poverty. And how do we ensure this no poverty? By increasing the GDP. So if you look at the effort made world over is that the governments are encouraged to increase their GDP so that the poverty will not be there. Right. If you look at the outcome of what the effort that has been done, the below, if you see, it says over the last 35 years, the dominant economic answers to reduce poverty has been to increase GDP. Growth has happened, perhaps more than required. But look at where the prosperity and consumption increased. So interesting, you know, those who were already having enough is now having more than enough. So the last one says the consumption was scale, you know, 20 and now it has become 27. The one on the lower side had 2.5 scale and now it has become 2. So it has decreased overall in the low income. In the high income, it has gone high up. So previously, the difference was 2.5 to 20, that is 8 times. Now the difference is from 2 to 27, almost 14 times. So GDP has increased, but its impact has gone in favor of the high income and not in favor of the low income. In fact, if you look at the low income, it has gone down. So this kind of solution of the, you know, trying to get rid of the problem, generally does not work. What is being proposed here is working for a system that aims for prosperity in every family, which means education so that everyone can rightly identify their needs. Education such that there is a feeling of relationship amongst all. Education so that there is a feeling <coughs> so that every family has the skills for sustainable production, can produce something that is required. Then relationship-based exchange system focused on ensuring the fulfillment of need. Right? The right utilization. All this put together 
will lead to the feeling of prosperity in every family. So this is what is being proposed as a solution. Similarly, you can see that these different goals, the SDG goals, can be fulfilled if we can ensure the fulfillment of these five human goals. Right? So, for example, if we work for the human goal number one, that is right understanding and right feeling through human education, okay, we will have people with right understanding, right, the right feeling and the right skills, right, and that will ensure the quality education. And it will naturally take care of things like gender inequality, right? So when we understand, when we have the right understanding about human being and we can understand that human being is not just the body but coexistence of the self and the body, then we can see that at the level of self, we are all similar, right? Male or female. The difference lies at the level of body and that difference is for complementarity, right? and not for inequality. Similarly, the other goals, you know, for example, if we work for human goal one and two, a good health and the well-being will be maintained, right? And if we work for all these three, the right understanding, the good health, and ultimately the prosperity in every family. Then this prosperity and this getting rid of the hunger will naturally take place. In fact, if you look at this global level, right, the food production is six times the requirement. The total wastage is one third of the production. And we can see that the wastage is enough to feed 1300 crore people right, per year. And there are only 700 crore people or at the most, most 800 crore people. That means we are not running short of the physical facility, not running short of the food. right? But if we ask ourselves, are we conscious, responsible consumers? Have we understood the right utilization? If we ask this just a question of production or is it just a question of distribution or is it a question of living in relationship or lack of relationship and a question of right understanding and in that sense is there a need for right education for human education and if you look at all these questions and get the right answers to it you can see that with right education and, you know, system of education, we'll have the right understanding about the human being. We'll understand about the relationship and be able to live with relationship. That will lead to an equal distribution or at least, you know, distribution with that feeling of relationship. And because we already have enough production six times, there will be no hunger, right? Similarly, all other goals can be seen, you know. With one, two, and three human goals, we can take care of SDG 1, 2, 8, 9, and 12, and so on. So you can look through this. I'm not uh, placing the details. The third topic that we are going to take up in this conference is that of education, right? And if you look at the education, what we are doing today is largely focused on skill education, right? At most, addresses the needs of the body. And as a result, the right understanding in is not in the focus. The capacity to live in relationship with other human being is not in focus. The core focus is 
if you look at you know our uh, higher education you know the students going through the process of higher education whether engineering or management the core focus is to accumulate more and more to consume more and more rather than to produce what is required and utilize it rightly and this is creating all kind of problems right the solution suggested is that we must have value based skill education so skill alone is not enough right you can develop technology but you cannot ensure the right utilization of the technology unless you have the values right because skills the technology are only the means to be utilized by the human being right and if the human beings have right values they will make right utilization of it otherwise it may be wrongly utilized or it can be a big source of problem so this value based skill education that is being proposed addresses the needs of the self as well as the needs of the body therefore it ensures right understanding in every child the capacity to live in relationship with other human being and third the capacity to identify the need of the physical facility the skills and practice for sustainable production of more than what is required the capacity for right utilization of physical facility leading to the feeling of prosperity so if this is made available as the education for every child then they will develop all this capacity and as a result they will be able to live with happiness and prosperity in themselves and work for happiness and prosperity of others so keeping this all this in mind aict has developed a new fine framework by the name holistic value based education this booklet on the right side is uh, being issued by uh, aict which contributes to the fulfillment of these human aspirations in particular the aspirations articulated in the indian constitution the nep 2020 and it also includes the un sdgs the three main component of this holistic value based education one is the education on values founded on a holistic and human world vision understanding harmony right at all levels so we have this universal human values then the reinforcement and exemplification of living in harmony so we have courses and examples and case studies of local regional and national values languages and skills so we have traditional knowledge systems you know which were more uh, kind of wholesome in dealing with the issue of a human society and third is learning skills for living in harmony and their practice right the nature friendly and human friendly technologies skills and of course this all can be done in the mother language or the local language or the regional language right the role of educational institution the corporate universities and the government in this regard is to provide an environment for human education right that is the management the faculty and staff have a holistic human world vision and are living by it the content and process of education is holistic and human leading to harmony so this is what is necessary for ensuring a human education and it is the role of this institutions whether no uh, academic institutions or the government institutions to make these two things available that is the people who are there in these universities and colleges they have this holistic human world vision and they are living by it and the whole process and the whole content and process of education is based on this vision 
So to provide human education in steps, these three things have to be done. The value education, the value-based education and value-based living. The value-based, the value education has to do with introducing human values in the existing curriculum without immediately changing the whole curriculum. The second is value-based education where all other courses are updated to be value-based, right? To be harmoniously interconnected, right? With these basic values. And third is value-based living. That is practice of living in harmony. The institution is a living model of this value-based living, a holistic and value-based living. So in these three steps, we shall be able to introduce this human education in all the academic institutions and the universities. The regulatory bodies can start with including these parameters and giving them appropriate weightage and facilitating the process. AICT is one example, which is uh, doing it in a very uh, big way. Right from 2017, it is trying to uh, make it an integral part of the uh, of the content of the uh, syllabus in all the engineering and professional colleges. Uh, even uh, university, which Rajuji was mentioning, the UGC has come up with this uh, uh, possibility of uh, introducing it through the uh, HRDCs preparing the faculty for the universities. So if you look at what we are doing, trying to do overall is this. Starting with clarity of all-encompassing solution, we are making effort for all-encompassing resolution. And with the hope that this will take care of three and four in due course of time. But if necessary, we are also trying to work for three and four as and when necessary. So what we are doing therefore is clarity of this all-encompassing resolution through Recognition of human goal, which we briefly mentioned, the program for its fulfillment, the two things. Then in the light of this clarity, we are making effort for human education and sanskar, for human conduct, for human constitution and human order. And these are two efforts which have to be made continuously, generation after generation. And in the process, if there is a need in a temporary manner, we will work for three and four. But our effort mainly is focused on one and two. So we are trying to work for identifying or providing a system of education or developing a system of education which is able to rightly identify these five goals as the goal of human being. And developing the competence to fulfill these goals through these systems, at least these five systems have to be in place. And this can be done through the process of self-development. So we all have to start with ourselves first. Then such people together will develop the team which can work for the societal development, for the development of a human society. And that is the process through which the CHV team is working through and the purpose of this international conference is to share the whole process right, with people who are engaged as educators, as the vice chancellors, as the directors, as the policy makers. So if we sum up, working on holistic solution will result into fulfillment of individual goals, as we mentioned, goals of happiness and prosperity through the development of human consciousness. 
It will help in developing a human society in which the well-being of all is ensured generation after generation. And in the process, it will also ensure regulation of problems at their root, including SDGs. The initial step is our self-development, preparation and providing value education to the next generation. Gradually and naturally, value-based education will follow. This conference is to share our experience and encourage them. So this is what uh, I had to share with you uh, to draw your attention towards the essence of what we are going to work through this international conference. I will open it up for questions. Okay. So till the time permits, we'll take up questions uh, regarding what we have placed here. Yes, welcome. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, Bhaiya, uh, for that uh, insightful address. And, uh, you know, where you very uh, meticulously talked about uh, the vision statement and how we can fulfill from the individual goals for happiness and prosperity uh, through the through human consciousness. Well, so uh, may I request uh, the participants uh, who would like to put some questions we have. Uh, five minutes of time and uh, so if there we can take up one or two questions that would be fine okay we have sarat chandra and we have a geeta yes welcome yes please uh, you can unmute yourself ganesh ji namaste sabhi ko namaste Namaste, Gita Ji. Namaste, Ganesh Ji. Uh, yes. Ganesh Ji, I just want to know about human constitution. Yeah. The human constitution means people with human consciousness and living with human conduct, if they live together, how will it look like? Right? That is human mm. constitution. So, if people with human consciousness living with human conduct, if they are living together in the family, in the society, with the nature, how will that look like? That detail is mm. what is that is human constitution. Gee. So, when, uh, when we talk about individual, we say human conduct. About a family, society, then we call it as human constitution. And then when it is passed over generation, we call it as human tradition. Yes, true. Okay. true. Thank you so much, Ganesh Ji. It gives yeah. us lots of hope. <laughs> yes, we have to make it successful. The responsibility, Gee, the responsibility is on us to make it work. Very true, yeah. Ji. Yeah. Thank you so much for an enlightening session. Thank yeah, you. thank you, Gita Ji. There is a question from Vyagra Ji that is for problem centric. We are saying example of problem for body. Uh, that is cancer. Are we ha are we have any problem centric approach for problems with self? Yeah, yeah. So many of them. People have this problem of depression, right? Or problem of hyperactivity. It's a problem of the self, right? And because of this hyperactivity, people get violent. Now, what is the solution? You give sedatives, right? You give sedatives which makes the body incapacitated. So inside there is still violence, but it cannot be expressed through the body. And we think that the problem is solved. Isn't it? So first the self was suffering. Now you are making the body also suffer because the sedatives after some time becomes a big liability for the body. Isn't it? The whole nervous system of the body starts getting uh, you know, disordered. 
So, in fact, this is worse when it comes to the self. The many problems that we are facing today at the level of self are being handled through the body. So, it does not work at all. It only diverts the problem or it, you know, kind of uh, sub subsides the problem rather than handling the problem. Isn't it? Uh, okay, thank you, Bhaiya, for that uh, 